We take a day off, you won't take a year off. That's why I can't hang with you. You want to make it a lifestyle. Come on, this is a good place to take a praise break. And I ain't trying to be lukewarm, not now. Come on, take a praise break with me. Come on, I ain't trying to be lukewarm. Not about now, not about now. Let's look at Isaiah 46, 9 through 10. We're going to get through this sandwich real quick. Remember the former things of old, for I am God. Say, I am God. And there is none else. I am God. And there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. How long do you think it takes some of you school, you students, you students, y'all still in school, you still taking science. How long do you think it would take to get to the last star, the final star, the, the most furthest star, beyond the Milky Way, beyond the galaxy? How, how, how long will it take to get there? Uh, heaven is beyond the furthest star. Heaven is beyond the furthest star in the universe. I mean, with the big old telescope that they got, you know, the furthest star. How long will God live beyond the furthest star? Uh, uh, you know, he, he, he lives so far. Heaven is so far away that God lives way beyond that. Yet, if you ask him something, he can get you an answer from way back there to all the way here in, in, in before you can blink your eyes. So, I mean, what kind of power, what kind of uh, fiber optics is he using? I mean, what kind of speed intel system do he have? He, uh, heaven is so far beyond the periscopes and telescopes and the furthest star that when you say hallelujah, God moves and, and gets a little tickle on his throne that it's, he can hear you that far and get you an answer just that quick. I mean, he is that awesome, yet when we praise him, we treat him like he can't hear nothing, he can't see nothing, he's blind, dumb, crippled, and crazy, yet he says, I am God, and, and if we only knew the God we were serving, I just don't believe we would be as lukewarm about it, and I'm just looking forward to the day that I see him face to face. I'm getting excited right here. This is a good place to take a praise break. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's praise him. We may not finish this today. Come on, let's praise him. 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 I just heard a word, ready or not, here I come. Ready or not, here I come. Ready or not, here I come. Praise God. He says at the end of it, and I will do my pleasure. And he put it in this word. It's in this Bible. It's in this Bible, an appointed time. Now, how, let me explain that to you. Jesus came in the fullness of time. Listen to me. He didn't just up and chuck and up, here he come. It was that way to the people, but it was in the fullness of time. In other words, God didn't just sit up there one day and say, well, oh, oh, Jesus, Jesus, go. God sat back, amen, and in the fullness of time. It was already predestined. You know the word, from the foundation of of the world. In other words, when everything got hot, trouble came, God didn't like say, oh, we need a plan. We need a plan like we do. You know, we manage our situation. God didn't up and just say, oh, oh angels, oh, Holy Spirit, oh, oh Jesus said, Jesus, well, I'll go, Father, I'll go. You know, that's how we think God run his business. God sat there chilling. From the foundation of the world, he knew the day, the time, and the hour. So if he didn't do that with the coming of the Son of Man, what make you think that his return hadn't already been figured out? He already got an appointed time, and he hid it in his word. And I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited. Somebody hold me back. Say, hold him back, Jesus. I just read to you a scripture where God gives us a principle here of how he reveals himself. We look over. The prophet Isaiah says, remember the former things of old. 
for I am God. There is none else. I am God. There is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. So here's how God reveals himself. And here's how God reveals when he's coming. He revealed it from the beginning. He revealed how he's coming from the beginning. He didn't hide it in the book of Revelation. Revelations is not how he's coming. Genesis is how he's coming. Because here's how God wrote it up. That even if you don't read well, if you can read the first sentence of Genesis, And if you take time just to study the first sentence of Genesis, you will know, number one, that I'm coming to save you. And you will know, number two, that I'm returning again. You ain't got to read the whole Bible. Because everybody's not literate enough to understand all of the covenants, all of the concepts, all of the doctrine. So if you just open the book and just read, in the beginning, God created heaven and in earth. It's all hidden right there. So he, he gives us the key to his return. And I'm going to show you a portion of it today. There's none like me. Why? Because I declare, this is what makes me different from other gods. This is why you can keep standing strong on your job, brother. There ain't no other religion, and we're more than a religion, that their God can tell you what's going to happen in the end from the beginning. That's what prophecy is. That's why Satan fights prophecy and any of us that walk in prophecy or we come to understand prophecy. Because what prophecy is, is declaring what's going to be from the end from the beginning. And our God he declares the end from the beginning. The rest of them, they declare what happened, not our God. He tell you what's going to happen, and it comes to pass. We got prophets like Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all of them prophesied 2,000 years ago, and it's happening to the detail today what they prophesied. Israel became a nation prophesied some thousand years before it ever happened. Somebody said it'll never happen, and it's happening down to the detail. Didn't Buddha, Buddha them didn't do it. Mohammed them didn't do it. Read their books. All they can tell you to do is get a bean pie and go out on 23rd and Martin Luther King, sell some bean pies, show them wear a clean suit and a bow tie. Ezekiel prophesying about the nations coming together. That's why I believe in this God. Countries that are sitting together at the same table breaking bread back even 10, 15 years ago wouldn't do it. Now they're sitting together. They're having picnics together. Their wives are calling one another. Our God prophesied that 800,000 years ago, 1,500 years ago. Never happened. Israel dispersed as a nation 2,000 years. Wasn't even a country. Kept their own language. Our God prophesied it'll happen, and it's happened. That's why I can believe in him. That's why I can believe the Bible. Anybody say the Bible ain't true. They a lie. Let God be true and every man a lie. Because our God can prophesy the end from the beginning. And I can prove that some of the things that he said have already come to pass. What can you tell me? How to cook a better pie? How to have three women in my harem? I mean, what can you tell me? All you can tell me is some hookamajooka stuff. But my God can tell me what's going to happen tomorrow. And I can prove it because I can tell you what he's already said that's happened. And you can't deny it. So when he says that, I declare the end from the beginning, he gives us a key. That's why so many of us, when we go to church, We'd rather feel what God going to do today. What he going to He going to give me some food to eat tomorrow and all that. And that's why he said, why are you worried about food and raiment? He says, the birds of the air don't worry about their feathers. The lilies don't worry about what color they going to be. You worth more than birds and lilies. So what you worried about food for? Your whole religion worried about your next meal? 
The righteous are never forsaken, and their seed never have to beg bread. Your prayer should be, give us this daily bread, and then move on. Come on, somebody. This is a good place to have a praise break. Come on. I'm rushed. I'm doing about 75. Going to get a ticket. Let's go to the very first scripture in the Bible. Amen. Now, you need to write this down, then you do your own study and research, amen, because I'm a Berean. Say Berean. Berean. And a Berean is always searching to see if stuff is true. I don't believe nothing a preacher got to say. Some of y'all do. Because you know how I know? Because when you leave church, you don't never read your Bible. <laughs> I don't believe me. I do. I don't. I don't preach. Yeah, you do. Because when you go home, that Bible don't see, don't see the light of day. That's right. So you, you got a lying spirit. Ah, no, I, I don't believe everything. But yeah, you do. Because the next time you open it, it'll be next Sunday morning. So you believe everything the preacher got to say. But when you, when you, when you know that you and him got a relationship, all I am and any preacher supposed to be is salt. We're supposed to say something. It makes you thirsty enough that you go study for yourself to be approved. We ain't your God. We ain't your Savior. We, d- we make you want to go study and dig more. And if I done that, I done my job. Come on, somebody. And that's all I want to do is do my job. And if I said something that you don't agree with, don't call me no false prophet. Amen. Because I ain't no false prophet. I am not here to deceive you. Praise God, I'm here to help you. Amen. If I err somewhere, then you come back and show me. Because it may be that you don't understand, praise the Lord, rather than I'm being false because my intent is not to deceive you. Come on, somebody. Don't go home and don't understand. You know, I'm fasting and praying for revelation. And you eating and getting revelation. One of us going to have to give up something. Hello. You buffet in your body and get revelation, and I'm buffeting mine and get revelation, and we disagreeing. Somebody gonna have to, one of us gonna have to change up for you. You understand what I'm saying? Now I'll change, but be easy on me. You taking out too much trash. Trash man, you got double, double, double trash can to be arguing with me right now. So let's work on that. <laughs> Let me move on here. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> easy now, easy now. Okay, <laughs> let's praise the Lord. Y'all okay? All right, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, right here, God is so awesome that it says right here, in the beginning, God, in the beginning, in the beginning, Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning. Now, I don't have time to do it because you'd be here all day. And, you know, I would love nothing more than to keep you here all day because I ain't got nothing to do. Amen. And this is what I do. So this ain't religious. I wouldn't, this be my joy. But I I know ain't no sense of us doing that. But this just the witch, and you can do your own research. Amen. It's, it's, It's out there. There's good stuff to study and there's bad stuff to study. The Hebrew language is a language that has both pictures and numbers. It's a it's a three uh, it's a three uh, three in one language. It's a language of pit- pit- pictographs, numbers, and phonetics. English is not a a, a language of every sil- every uh, letter has a picture to it, but Every letter has a phonetic to it. E, A is R, ah, you know, I, I, M is E, M, E, you know, et cetera. I don't have time for that. Bless Miss Green. Um, <laughs> you talk to English. Um, the Hebrew, <laughs> y'all know that story. Okay. The Hebrew, Hebrew goes from right to left. 
But every, every character has three phases to it. And I'm just going to give you a little Hebrew, just enough to direct you. So every character has a picture to it, has a number, and has a phonetic. And this is just give you enough to make you go and, and study some more for yourself. But in these words, in the beginning, Genesis 1 and 1, is the words. There's some words in there that you need to understand. And I'm going to get to the end of it because those words are actually, that word actually means bear a sheep. And in that, it means in beginning. And in that word, or in those syllables, those are the syllables for that word. This is very interesting, and I'm not ashamed to do this, put this out here. But it means who is inside the tent, and it means that who's inside the tent, the sun is inside the tent, the head, Elohim, and he's coming out of the tent to crush and to destroy is what it means. Now, that should be enough for you to prove me wrong, but let me get to it here. Okay, I didn't, I didn't put it in here. Okay, what these syllables mean is the prince has gone out of his home. The right syllable, you read from right, is the tent, and the prince has gone from his home in the beginning to crush and to destroy. And the last one is the cross. So that's just enough. You need to, you need to research it yourself, okay? That's from the beginning. You say, well, it says in the beginning. But if you read it in Hebrew, it's, got, it's a picture of what Christ from the beginning. Now, if you really think about it, the Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. But it's saying more than that. From the very beginning, God is declaring that Jesus would come from heaven, and he would come from heaven and crush sin. But he also will come from heaven, and he would destroy sin forever at the end. It's all written right there. I don't have time to go into it right now. So just enough that if you want to know, you find the rest on your own. Okay? Now, it's quiet in here. See, that's our problem. We want somebody to feed us all of it so we can still be in unbelief. But I'm not going to do that. But I am going to give you the rest of what I have. Amen. Because that's what those say. And English doesn't say all of that. Come on, computer. See, we're used to stuff in English. Just say it, say it. If you're going to say it, say it. No. Yeah. Okay, so you may not be able to read that too clear, but I'll try to help you here. Amen. Now, hang on with me. I need my pointer here, probably. Can I get my pointer here <laughs> and try to help you? Yeah, let me try to help you here. Let me get philosophical on you. <laughs> as much as I can. Okay. Now, using the principle, using the principle that the day, a day with the Lord, okay, it's right there. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. It says this fact. One day is with the Lord as of a thousand years. How can we know that's a fact and not just, well, it might be? Anybody? How can we say, say well, it, it say as and it might not be that way? How can we know that? I'm going to tell you how we can know. Because we know that the millennial is the seventh day and it's a thousand years. We know that the millennial after the rapture, 
is the seventh day, and Jesus comes back for a thousand years. That's the seventh day, and he rests. So we know that the seventh, we know that the millennial is a thousand years. So if the millennial is a thousand years, then there has to be six, six thousand years in another direction. Hope I don't lose you here. Stay with me here. You don't know me. Get this in church. I'm getting it today. Assuming that a day is as a thousand years, God has a 7,000 year plan. God has a 7,000 year plan. Because the millennial is the seventh thousand year of man's creation. How do we know? We can backdate from when Jesus died, 30 AD. We can backdate. And we can go back, and if we just go back to about uh, just beyond uh, 2,000 years ago, we have David. We go back a little further, we have uh, Moses. We go back a little further, we've got Abraham. We go back a little further, Adam. Adam lived to be 930 years of age. Y'all going to stay with me? Let me show you something here. Then we go back a little further. We know, we can know that creation was approximately 4004 B.C. And we can know that by backdating. Because the Bible in itself gives us certain dates. The one thing we don't want to do as Christians is believe that God is this. God's a God of numbers. We think God run his business like we run our checkbook. But God is a God of numbers. The Bible is full of numbers. Take numbers from God, you got to take the book of numbers out. And you got to take every book out because the Bible talks about numbers. God's a God of numbers. So we know for a fact, you and I know for a fact, that Jesus died. And some people want to argue and say, well, he didn't die 30 A.D. He died 31 A.D., 32. Okay, give or take. But most theologians agree that he died at 30 A.D. So, again, 30 A.D. would be 4,000 years from creation. All right? 4,000 years from creation. We live 1,000 years later. I looked up some history. 1,000 years later, oh, we had uh, England and Scotland was fighting the Middle Ages. Or, excuse me, medieval times. Dungeons and dragons. Okay, we are approximately right here. Not 1992, but... I looked it up. It's been 1,992 years since Jesus died. 1,992 years since Jesus died. Wake up. Okay? So, in 2030, it will be another 2,000 years. It's been 2,000 years from Adam to Abraham, 2,000 years from Abraham to Jesus, 2,000 years from Jesus to 2030. We live in 2022. That's 6,000 years. Six is the number of man. The 7,000 years, which is the millennial, the world ends as we know it. Because the world, at that time, Jesus comes and sets up his kingdom. And then for a thousand years, then after that on 3030, the whole world is burned up by fire. Let me go back to that point. Let me go back. Two thousand years from Adam to Abraham. Two thousand years from Abraham to Jesus. Two thousand years from Jesus to 2030. Okay. But it's only been 1,992 years of the 2,000 so far. If God is a God of patterns, no man knows the day or the hour. 
there's only eight years left till the tribulation ends. Ends. Yeah, ends. Ends. Till the tribulation ends. The tribulation is seven years. Of course, the first part is the deception. Things are nice. In the middle of it, it gets deceptive and great. So listen to me. If that's the case, we, we know that if Jesus died in 30 A.D. and we add 2,000 years, that's 2030 A.D. No man knows the day or the hour. Let's just say now. So that would mean that in 2030, Daniel's 70th week would have to start, which is the Great Tribulation, or would, would, have to, would have to end, excuse me. And Jesus would have to set up his kingdom for 1,000 years in 2030. It's 2022. Daniel's 70th week is seven years. The church is supposed to be out of here before then. If we go through the tribulation, hopefully we won't. I believe, you know. In other words, you ain't got long. If God is a God of patterns, you got to still admit that come seven, eight years from now, we've been on the earth under covenants for 6,000 years. 